Mike McElroy here with Timeless Fence System. Today we're going to look at installing our T-post on steep terrain or hilly ground. And I know that it's, it's very simple and, and pretty common that every time you drive a T-post in the ground, you want it to be plumb. But when we're working on sloping ground or steeper terrain or hillsides, that becomes a little bit of a problem sometimes. So what I want to show you is a good way to, to install your T-post on, on steep terrain and what to do at the top of a rise, the, the bottom of the slope of the hill, and then we're going to look at some sharp dips. First, we'll start out on a sharp rise here. <clears throat> what we want to show is at the base of the hill, we want to be able to have a post in here that we can anchor into the ground because we're going to get some, some, some pressure to pull up or upward pressure, I'll say. So we put in an H post right here. We'll put an H post at the top of the hill so that it will stand up because you're gonna have down pressure on that. In between, we're going to put our T post in perpendicular to the ground. Now I know that that looks really strange when you're out there trying to, to put a post in um, you know, at an angle. But I'm going to show you what happens if, if we're on a hillside and we put our post um, plumb and then we're running our wire through the hole here at an angle and what happens is it catches on the bottom of the punched hole on this side, the top of the hole on this side. That wire catches and you get some resistance and then if you are trying to pull that wire through several posts, you're going to create um, friction and you know it's gonna it's gonna cut a little groove uh, in the PVC which that doesn't hurt anything but the fact is it makes it hard to to pull that wire whereas if you take your post and put it at a 90 degree or perpendicular to the ground now your wire will slide right through your post the other thing that this allows at the bottom your bottom wire and each wire above that you have the same spacing along your flatter ground and then going up the hillside, your wire spacing between the bottom wire and the ground will be the same. If your post was perpendicular, straight up and down plumb, then your wire here is going to be closer to the ground. Uh, the other thing is if you're using insulators, uh, it puts a strain on that insulator when you're tightening a fence up. That insulator is going to twist and it's going to break, and that's what happens to a lot of insulators and, and why they break. So uh, the, the, the main thing is, is just perpendicular to the ground. Uh, an easy way to do this is to take a 2 by 4 and make yourself a square, say 3 foot by 4 foot, and just set it on the ground and you're 4 foot in the air, you have that angle that you can go ahead and either drill or drive your post into the ground and then you know that it's perpendicular. The other thing is that like I said earlier it looks strange but once you get your wire on there then you'll see here your wire should be a 90 degree angle to your post and then your wire will also just be parallel to the ground. So that's what we do on a sharp rise. On a sharp dip right here and let's say we have a ditch in a field that's going out to a creek or a river and let's say from top of the slope to top of the slope is 20 feet okay from here to here is 20 foot all right and then the depth from the top of the ground here down to the bottom of the ditch let's say it's a 10 foot deep ditch and and that's pretty common so what we want to do is, uh, instead of taking our three or four strand wire, whatever we're doing, taking it all the way down and, and it causing some problems of catching a lot of debris and everything, especially when the water backs up and then when the water recedes out, what we do is we just go ahead and run our fence straight across. These are all T-posts, you know, 20 foot. That's, that's no big deal for a span on a, on a T-post. And then we'll come off the bottom wire and put an independent wire down here with our post. So we have our spacing. So if animals, let's say cattle, get down in the ditch, then they're not able to, to pass that point. It'll be electrified. 
Well, what happens now if, let's say you have a rain or a flood and water starts backing up in this ditch? If water gets up in this ditch, guess what it's gonna do to your electric fence? It's gonna short it out. So there is an accessory called a floodgate controller that you can uh, go ahead and put in your fence. And when that water comes up, it'll actually cut the energy off of this wire right here, but it will not affect the rest of your fence. Okay, so it's a, it's a neat accessory. The only other option that you might have would be a cutoff switch, um, but you would have to physically go out and, and turn off the switch before the water rises up or you know, some point in time. Um, so there's a couple of, um, of ideas on, on sharp rises and dips and, and putting your post in perpendicular to the ground. Uh, it's something that it's, it's, it may get a, it may be something that you have to kind of get used to, but once you do install it, I think that you will really like the look of, of your fence. We have a lot of questions on, on things of this nature and we, we really appreciate the questions that our, that our customers give us. If you have any questions, just feel free to give us a call at 800-788-4709.